Um, what I'd like to do now is to go through the tips and uh, learnings that we can do as becoming a practitioner in applying strategic foresight methods. Now, my understanding is the best way to get people primed and ready to do these methods is to consider doing the foundational questions first. Yes, I will do that first. I ask groups, individuals, organizations, first, what's your research question? Futures of Health 2025. So when you say research question, you mean the topic they're going the to topic, explore? The topic, yeah. yeah. And then we set up all, there's seven questions. If my question is, again, what will health look like in 2025? Question one, what's the history of your question? Question two, if current trends continue, what will it look like? Question three, assumptions. Four, alternative futures. Five, preferred. Six, the back cast. How do we get there? Seventh, is there a supportive story? So these questions prime people. They get them going. They have to have tough questions around assumptions. And they get to articulate their preferred futures. Now, I know my, myself in using these as a priming sort of process. I've done a pre the workshop and post or during within the workshop right yeah. at the beginning. And to some degree, I think their value is, is they, they give us a sort of a line in the sand where our thinking is. Yes. Is that what you mean? Yeah. And you can test it. What I say is, well, the methods may be a bit difficult. Go out and try the seven questions with your staff, with your friends. With Run them through it. Make it real. With your family. With your family. Do an action learning project. Okay, what I'd like to do now is to help prepare someone to uh, move into using this as a, a, a leader or as a practitioner or as a manager. How can I start developing my foresight practice? Yeah, I would start, start with mapping. Okay. So you've done the questions, now you ask yourself, use the futures triangle. It has three parts. What is the preferred image of the future? What does it look like? What is the characteristics? One. Second, what are the drivers pushing towards there? Third, what are the weights? That gives you a great map of the future. Future triangle is easy, everyone can do it. The pushes are quantitative, the pull is visual, and the weights tend to be qualitative. Okay, so really then the foundational questions can actually help populate the future triangle. It exactly. makes sense of Yes, that brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So let me see, I'm facilitating a workshop. Yeah. Uh, I get people around the room, we clarify what the research topic is, we yes. to explore, and when then we give people some paper and creatively they go and work out what is the push, pull and the weights of that subject. Yeah. Then I have them act it out sometimes. Ah, so now it comes to the reporting side. Yeah, yeah. So that they, they may do a skit, they may do an interview. One or two people could be the weight. One person could be the push, third oh. person could be the image. So then they might do a little drama or a skit, some way to embody it. One of the things I've noticed in, uh, in workshops is that there's this strong sense to have a balanced triangle, but it's really ever balanced, is it? No. Some places the weights may be more. We did one workshop on person-centered healthcare, and the image was beautiful, yes. focused on the patient, focused on the person, on the community. The pushes where we've seen quality and safety and health increase once we do that model. The weight is senior hospital administrators may agree, but that means giving up power to patients. That means for oncologists or surgeons to, say, to give up a bit of expertise. So the weight may be very heavy there. The mm. push is brilliant, the data makes sense, the, the it pull is brilliant, the push makes sense, but there is a real weight. So it could be skewed. Solving climate change. We can see a sustainable future, we know the pushes, but there's still weight around the industrial era. The way we've been behaving as a society. Exactly. So that leads then, are there some questions we could ask as a facilitator to critique or analyze or synthesize the results from the triangle? Well, I would, I would say, given the triangle, what are the key messages? Do you find a way to lighten the weights? Or do you decide there's a huge wave of pushings, pushes coming on, let me write it. Or you decide no one actually gets where we're going. We need to make the vision compelling. We need to tell a better story. Or we, our vision is no longer relevant or yes. maybe we don't have one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's very easy, then you can start to decide where you intervene, yes. where you may build strategy around to yes. address some of the more uh, discerning or concerning issues of which push, pull or weights. And there may be messages that you may decide, here's the message that needs to be communicated to all our staff or stakeholders. Now, one of the other questions that's come up for me by participants who've done the Futures Triangle is they, they notice then there's a range of images. Yes. Images become more explicit, but they tend to compare and contrast. There's two ways to do it. One is to say, what is my preferred image? What's my preferred future? You get one type of triangle. The second is, what are the competing images? Ah. Sustainability versus industrial 
versus a high-tech, robotic, artificial intelligence future. Because I've had another practitioner say to me, but Steve, is the future's trying to go when we ask for the pools, really about trying to get our forecasts or our desired or preferences? You could do it. It's two different ways. Just be matter. clear how you're going to use it. Okay. So you need to be clear whether it's yeah. forecasts or preferences. Yes. As images. Yes. I also noticed then it does make for a rich discussion when you start seeing the competing images. Yes. And for each of those images, there's a weight and, uh, and yes. a push. Yeah. If, if, you, if your preferred future is more industrialization, What's the weight? The weight is climate change. The weight is pollution. The weight is silos. Mm. The weight is young people not wanting that future. Mm. The push may be money. So foundational questions lead us, prime us to be able to do the first mapping of our plausible yes, you future. you start the six pillars process. That might bring some insight in terms of what is our foresight approach? What's our capacity in foresight? Or what are our limitations? So Brilliant. can you tell us now a bit more on the second method of mapping? That's really the future's landscape. And we ask individuals to say, okay, the landscape is the jungle, the chess set, the mountaintops, the emergent future, and the vision. Uh -huh. So where are you spending your time? Is your organization totally in the jungle? Very quick time, scarcity. So in other words, my responses to the future are very about survival, yeah. experiment, not very... Survival-based. And the chess set is strategy. The mountaintops is crucial. Are we looking at the big picture? And then there's the emergent future, what actually emerges, and all the time saying, okay, where will we be in 2030? That's the vision. So you want to be able to understand where you are in the landscape, and do you have a landscape? And by understanding where you are in the landscape, what does that mean, potentially? Well, you could decide, well, we're spending too much time in the jungle. How come we've not done a visioning part? How uh -huh. come we've not done scenarios? Or our foresight is very short term, exactly. not really long term. Yeah, yeah. Or not a combination yeah. of both. Or some groups, they're all the time in the vision and they're not in the, they don't have anything about data, reality. So they're not really grounded in pragmatism in trying to make yeah. alignment between vision and... No action. strategy. Always in the clouds, no strategy. Futures, landscape is almost an auditing, an auditing tool. So the key message then in understanding where you are in the landscape helps you to adapt where you may be able to expand your foresight Brilliant. approaches. Yes. Okay. So the pillar of mapping, two key methods supported by the foundational questions. Yes. It leads us to then get a very robust sense of where we are now, where we've come from, but more importantly, where we're going, all things considered. Yes. Okay, thank you for expanding on the two methods on the pillar of mapping. Yeah.